of the Public Services Commission in Gross Hill Township. I'd like to call the meeting to order, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all and good evening. Call the roll. Uh, we have two members of our commission that uh, have excused absences tonight, uh, John Riley and Phil Kennedy. So we'll call the roll. Uh, Les Schmidtke. Present. Ron Wilder. Present. Jim Nelson. Present. Jim Budney. Here. Ed Van Oz. Here. And Bill Kostick. We have a quorum. We also have staff with us tonight that will all take part in the meeting. Uh, next is I'll entertain a motion to approve this evening's agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, moved and supported. That, <laughs> moved and supported that the agenda for the June 14th meeting be approved <coughs> and distributed. If there are no questions, <coughs> call for um, approval. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. Next, we have before you the May 10th minutes <coughs> of our meeting. Might add very copious and articulately written minutes. Um, at any rate, um, we'll have a chance to look at them. Is anybody prepared to make a motion? I so move that the minutes of May 10th, 2016 be approved. Is there support? Support. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor and keep by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. Next, we have uh, approval of bills, the vouchers that are page, found on pages 8 through 12 of your packet. I reviewed these myself. Uh, nothing looked uh, out of the order. If there are no questions, I'd entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, indicate aye. by saying uh, uh, aye. 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 <laughs> aye. Hurry up, get this done. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so the vouchers are approved. We also have a review of statement, uh, statement of expenditures and revenues for the first month of the fiscal year. And um, I guess it's two months now. So um, we just barely are scratching the surface on our expenditures for public service functions. Are there any questions? If not, we will receive and file the statements of revenues and expenditures. We also have on page 19 of our packet uh, a, a, a treasurer's report for DPS funds, which include water, sewer, roads, drains, refuse. Are there any questions? Uh, just one quick question. When do we get the uh, 2016 tax collection? Is that at the end of the year? Or? Oh, for it's December. Okay. December 1st, right? Okay. Okay, so, uh, and of course our budget is predicated on that basis, and that's why the, the especially the road fund looks like it's <coughs> pretty lean at the moment. But uh, that's anticipating all the expenditures and the monies that have been contracted for already for this year. If there aren't any questions, uh, we have a motion to approve the treasurer's report. Motion to approve the treasurer's report. I'll second it. There is support. Any, if, if there's no further discussion, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion's approved. So with that, uh, we uh, have an opportunity for public comment. And I do not see anybody from the public uh, here this evening. Public's always invited to attend our meetings. And with all we've got going on, we're going to talk about this next, uh, all that's going on in the community. Hopefully people will feel comfortable and free to come here and ask questions. Um, we've got a big drain project on Stout Road that's wrapped up. The East River Road water main project, uh, repaving of LaSalle Court. And uh, we're soon to start numerous uh, patchwork paving in many of our subdivisions. So with all those projects going on, um, <coughs> anybody's invited any time. So with that, did you have your hand up, anybody down there? No. Nope. Okay, so probably the biggest issue tonight that we have before us is item number one under action items, consideration of water and sewer rate increases for the current year, uh, fiscal year. So with that, we have uh, our township treasure, treasure, 
or finance, finance director. director. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, you're, the treasurer's you're, over there. Wait a minute. Ted, you're still the treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Darniak is here, and she's going to give a, uh, uh, a, a a summary of what you found in your packet, a lengthy summary of pages 21 through 42, which is a long explanation of, of what's going on. So, Anne, I would invite you to take the floor. Okay. Actually, um, I'd like to have Lorenda start with the history because I think that's important to, de to determine how the tr Detroit, or United, what is it? It's not Detroit <laughs> no, it's water, Great Lakes Detroit. Water Authority. Great Lakes water Authority. All right, Authority. So, I'll summarize in the first paragraph. Um, in 2010, they established a fixed monthly cost recovery to cover usage decline and uh, revenue shortfall for all wholesale customers. And through the years, that has started to go up. Right now, um, it's at 60%. Um, oh, for the can, monthly. Can I stop you right there? Sure. You need to explain who they are. Okay, first it was De uh, D Detroit Water and Sewer, and then they switched over. Now it's called Great Lakes Water Authority. They've, they've divided. Okay. So this year, Grozio's new fixed monthly charge will go from $58,400 to $62,600, <clears throat> excuse me, which is a 7.19% increase. Brenda, could you explain what wholesale versus retail is? Wholesale are the customers where we purchase it, and in turn we retail it out from the you know the consumers purchase it from us. Other well, cities and oh uh, yes, and so. right. So the build price increased from ten dollars and eighty seven cents to eleven sixty four, which is a seven point six one percent increase. And and Lorinda, that's per thousand There's, gallons. They or? no, they that, they do it in uh, cubic feet. Oh okay. Um, overall, the proposed increase by Great Lakes Water Authority will be 7.14% over last year. And as we all know, the water rates, we adjust them to cover our operation, um, maintenance of our water distribution uh, system, uh, operation and maintenance of the wastewater treatment plant, bond payments, equipment purchases, and capital improvements. You want to go? Start? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> So that 7.14% is what we used as a budgeted um, figure when we were doing the 16-17 um, budget. So we knew that that was our increase from Detroit, so we increased our water to meet that budget amount. If you look on page 28, when the budget was presented and, and looked at, um, we came up with, if you look at the first column, we came up with usage. So our usage um, has pretty much maintained stable over the last couple of years. So we know that pretty much at the 265 million gallons of water is what's being consumed by and billed um, to our customers. Um, so when we are looking at the revenue side of the equation, again, our budget is broken up to revenue, sewer, and refuse. Everything is broken up that way. Costs are allocated that way and um, things that are directly related to those individual cost centers are charged that way. Um, so when we presented the budget, we knew what our current um, water and sewer uh, rates were, if you look at the top of the page. So our water was $9.6 um, per thousand, sewer was $3.6 per thousand, which is about $13.2 in total. When we were presenting the budget, um, based on our usage, um, we presented the budget with the increases, with the new water mains, um, everything that belongs in operations as well as capital improvement. At that time, we had um, a deficit of 238000 At that time, we said, okay, we need to raise the water rate from 9.6 to 10.5, um, which is on that individual basis, on that level of the bill itself is a 9.4% increase. And at that time when I said, okay, we're going to, uh, um, currently we're going to look at this and we're going to readjust our, our budget. So when I, what I did is looked at the water rates, the sewer rates, as where we were compared to at the end of the year as far as revenue over expense. And I um, took a deeper look into the refuse part of the equation because it appeared over the last couple of years when we redid the contract um, for refuse collections that we were actually collecting about $60,000 too much revenue every year. So um, we, I, I knew what the water was going to have to be, but then we looked at the, at the rate. So what I did, if we go to page, on the water side, we know what the rate is based on the budget, it's based on current needs. 
So if we look on page 35, and I went and looked at um, all the customers that are billed, how they're billed, and I looked at our um, new uh, recycling refuse contract with waste management. Waste management. And so we looked at the contract, and if you look at our, um, what our current rates are we're billing um, for refuse, recycling, and yard waste. So those were our current bills. Brian, so, when you go through this, will you slow yep. down and walk us through it? Because yep. on the left side, you have the current rates. You right. call them the old rates. Right. And, then and on the right sandbox, it's the new. Yep. So go down the first column. Okay. You have, you have refuse, recycling, and yard waste. Right. Okay. okay, so we look at re refuse, and, and inside we have that current sheet that everyone's seen many, many times of our current rates um, on page 27 um, that we hand out to the public based on our water meter size and our monthly rates for our sewer and refuse. So I just took those rates, um, and how many, we have a monthly rate and a quarterly rate for each category, refuse, recycling, and yard waste. And I took those times, how many times per year they're billed and how many customers. So I basically went through to find out exactly how, how we're billing customers for each category. So currently we're billing, billing $16.35 per month um, for trash collection and $49 a quarter, 0.05 a quarter. So what I did in, in the budgets are, that are included, I looked at expenditures for the sewer, I mean for the refuse collection and disposal over the last couple of years, it was about 704,000, 744, 721. I just took an average and knew that our average cost is about $723,000. And that don't also, just don't include the contract, it also includes a portion of salary and wages and operations for that cost center. Um, so at that time you could see that we're collecting about 782,000 for those from the customers and that average expenditures were about 722000 So I had about a $60,000 that we were collecting too much. And in the budget, you could see that that was happening. Quick question, Ann. There's a slight difference in the number of customers uh, uh, between the yard recycling refuse. Is that because some of these are businesses and they don't use? We get billed. Um, it could be, I mean, the way she, the, I just looked at the total customer. If you look there, I was taking the last page of like 177 customers. I mean, it just took exactly the, the way they were building, being billed and some units were different. And I, I, without going through every customer, I could not determine why that was the case. But in our contract on the next page, they bill us, they look at, at a time and point in time. We're getting billed on the page 36. For 3,958 customers. So they're taken at a time and place, and obviously through the year people are changing or whatever. Maybe people are on vacation on the month I took, and they're not getting, you know, the yard waste. Um, so, so, but it came up with a number where we're at, and I knew we were collecting $60,000. So then I went to, not right now, refuse and recycling are all billed as one, and the yard waste is billed separately. So if I knew, based on our... Um, based on what we're paying for, because that was the only thing that's broken out right now, the yard waste, I could get to, it was about $78,000. So just kind of allocated those numbers. So in total, I, I could, I just rounded, made nice round numbers, and I actually made the yard waste to what it is. So if you look at the total now monthly, it would be $15 a month or $45 a quarter. So by doing that, we go back to the... Everyone kind of fell on that, where, where our rate for water is coming from and where our refuse rates are, are coming from. So if we go back to page 25, which is our bill, and we've seen this many times, um, our water maintenance um, has not changed. This is our, so on the, on the um, left-hand side is what our current portion would be, current bill would be based on 25000 gallons um, so what we the only thing we have here is the water consumption that is currently at uh, $240 or 960 for 25 and then the rest of the bill we are not um, choosing at this time to raise sewer rates we feel the sewer is collecting appropriately and then we have our current refuge rates for our total bill at this time on an average would be $436.95 
So effective July 1st is what the proposed increase would be. We'd increase the water consumption from $9.60 to $10.50. And then we'd go down to the refuse from $33 to $32.25, recycling from $7.80 to $7.50, and the yard waste went from $8.25 to $5.25 to more reflect the actual charges for the yard waste. Mm -hmm. uh, $60,000 that we were charging was $1,000 too much. Correct. When a person gets their bill in the mail, right. the bottom line is what they're going to look at. Correct. So Correct. Do we know how much it's kind of, is that further yep. on? The yep, structure? that's where we're going from this, yep. Right. So you. the average household, which would use that, so if we just look at total bills, apples to apples, obviously everyone's bills different based on consumption, but on an average, um, the increase would be $18.45 or 4.2% per quarter. That 4.2% is not accurate though, right? I mean, it's not... The, the true effect of the it's increases right it's an it's, it's an overall, average bill everyone's yeah, yes, gonna be yeah. different that's where it took me a while yeah. to yes yeah. it does but it, and I know it's just a, we're just changing the way things are allocated but but again we tried to diminish what our what we knew what our water rate was if we were going to put these new water lines for us for a period of time and we knew um, and I knew that I was collecting too much and saying obviously we don't want to overcharge customers if we can reduce rates we will. Um, but the water needs to be up a little bit. And do we have that uh, uh, with the new rates in here? This so one, page 26, mm, that one? No, do we give them the project, the bonding stuff? I think that's in your, that last. Um, it's in the last um, category? No, oh. no, it's in the discussion. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it is. I, yes, it is. Okay, um, can we turn to, just to show the commission of where I kind of feel this is going. Um, I'll tell you what page I'm on. So, as we discussed our budget, that you know we put these new water mains in, that we feel that this is important and would increase the rates slightly. So, um, the part of that is right now because of that. But if you look at page um, seventy six and seventy seven. Last discussion item. Yeah, it's in the discussion item. Going to see the thought process of, of where. So if you look at page 76, um, we decided that we could probably go ahead and do, the, do these water mains, mains for East River and West River because of the importance of them. <laughs> and obviously, we didn't want to put a huge financial burden on the tax on the ratepayers. Um, so we, when we did these graphs and we got our um, preliminary bond payment schedules. So I took page 76, and this is our current bond schedule, and we knew that um, the bond payments, annual bond payments were gonna go down. I mean, this is a big part of the budget. When you've got almost a million dollars in bond payments, it makes a huge difference. So we knew that some of these bonds were gonna start falling off, the building's gonna be totally paid for, and those are the ones in the bottom on the yellow. So as those go down, we can see that our bond payments are gonna go down. I mean, our rates now are currently reflected in those bond payments. So I feel that it's important right now that we get the 4% increase that we're projecting. Um, if you look at the next rate schedule, page 77, you can see that it does reflect in the top part that those rates are, um, that the rates will raise a little bit, but then hopefully in the future, I mean, assuming everything stays constant, we can look at the rates again and adjust as necessary. And it could possibly, due to those bond payment schedules, could go down because now we're losing all those bond payments. And that's what's nice about we can adjust rates accordingly that we see fit and we're not going to overcharge or undercharge. I mean, that's, we look at the rate structure of what our current needs are. So we know that our rates are the way they are due to a lot of those capital improvements that have been done in the past, these couple that we need to be done, and then we can readjust rates again in the future because you can see that the actual bond payments were going to go down from, you know, 900000 to an average of like 700000 so it, it will make a difference in the future. But I think this is necessary at this time, and depending on what um, the Water Authority does with our rates, I think this is a um, 
the increase is necessary at this time, and we'll look in the future in the next couple of years to see what we can do to adjust it. Are you done? Yes. Is there any questions, or if I can explain anything further? I want to. I want to. My make one comment on the last part we just talked about this, uh, the bond payments and the debt. What you're talking about is retiring some little bit of current debt mm -hmm. to allow us to move forward with the East River Road water main and the West River Road water main. But in the long term, depending on what the township in the future does, when you get into about 10 years from now or less, eight years from now, we really retire a lot of the sewer debt. Mm -hmm. There's a possibility that rates could come right. down. Right. Oh, for sure. And or the right. taxes that right. we pay for that debt could come down. Right. So <clears throat> this continued spiraling, except for what we receive from our wholesale supplier, which is Detroit's water system, now known as the Great Lakes Water Authority, uh, we could see an end to these increases. Correct. I mean, it, there almost seems to be like a light at the end of the tunnel once these projects, you know, the importance of these projects. and it's A long like ways off, and probably right. none of us will be around, but... <laughs> I might still uh, be. You might, you might be, yeah. <laughs> Ted but, will be. And the, uh, the vast majority of the bills are, I mean, the, the costs are stuff that we don't have control over. That's right. True. Correct. Right. Correct. I was just looking at some of the numbers you've got here, and uh, in 10 years ago, in 2006, uh, we were paying total including the water sewer and everything, $5.06, and six cents, that's on page uh, 26, by the way. We're paying $5.06 total. Now we're paying $14.10, which is a 179% increase over that 10-year period, which sounds astronomical again, but if you start breaking it down and look at it, sure. we can't easily change from Great Lakes Water Authority mm -hmm. to something else. And we can't negotiate with them because it is what it is. Uh, so there's not a lot of wiggle room. And speaking of them, and, and I'm sorry, uh, looking at this one letter, um, page 22 and 23 from them, and I'm a little bit wondering why on page 23, the second to last paragraph, it makes it sound as though they're trying to sell us something. Uh, but they are. They are. They want us to get under a contract. Sign again. Okay. So we're on. <clears throat> I, what, what would you what, what what would you say we're on now? A month to month? <laughs> well, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. We, we don't have a contract year year. right now. The model contract offers customers many advantages <laughs> compared to the old contract. Uh, see that, and I kind of scratch my head. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Yeah, you get a free app, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Ron, uh, more questions from you? Well, you know, I've got so many bills we could go on all night long, but I don't think there's a hell of a lot I can do about any of them. So I guess we'll just move right along. Okay, you can always bounce back in. Let's back up to uh, we'll go to one the more left. thing real quickly. It looks <laughs> as though you, you mentioned the 4.2 percent increase, and this right. is something they say. But it looks as though the true increase is going to be 6.8 percent. Am I right? For the water side, yeah. Oh, well, the, for the water bill, the actual the right. if you if we're playing the actual increase for just water is 9.4 percent. You're right, but I mean the total right. overall is supposed to decrease right. in the refuse in the, brings Yeah, I see. Yeah, and 6.8 yeah. between 6 .8 water and sewer and, and just consumption. The rest is based because we're lowering it because we're decreasing the the refuse. refuse. Right. Thank so, you. So the over the 4.2 is an overall. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go over to <laughs> Les Schmidtke for questions. Les, no questions. Okay, Jim Nelson. No questions. Ron, you can jump back in. Jim Budney. I'm I'm all set. Uh, Ted, do you want to say anything at this point? <coughs> I, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I think it's important to understand that we still remained. There are some advantages to buying into a, a contract with the water authority. The big disadvantage is we're also buying into five billion dollars worth of debt. Right. And that becomes a pretty scary number until we kind of see how this thing is going to level out. So I, I think that for all intents and purposes, this commission has kept their water rates as low as it could possibly keep it over the years. We are victims of 
an uncontrollable source of water. I don't see it getting any better through them, but I don't see an option out there right now either. So uh, I would encourage you to really consider <coughs> the numbers that Ann's put out. I think it's very fair. Uh, I don't like paying for water any more than anybody else does, but uh, it should also be noted that when the bond payments come due in 2024, most of that's going to come off our taxes, which currently is very close to five mils. And uh, that'll be a huge setback. It won't really affect our water rates, but it'll certainly affect our overall budgets. That's all I have. Um, Ron, if you want to go back to page 26, it, it does summarize it. And so we can compare year to year, and you're not mixing in the water. And we are we are trying to alleviate some of the increase. But the chart that Lorenda has um, done is very accurate and very Eye-opening. And that, you know, when that you see, it, yeah. Yeah, you, when you see what Detroit, you know, we always say, okay, well, we got to make up some of what um, the authority is giving us. So they got, you know, eleven. They're all over the board too. Eleven point three percent, eight point four two percent, seven point one six percent. So we did a thirteen point seven, a three point five three, and it probably would have been that had we not put those new water mains in and felt that it was important enough to do it. You know, I've heard for years, I don't know how true it is, but talking to friends in other cities, they seem to concur that gross yields being charged as water bills are higher than most of the neighboring communities. I don't know if we see any, if that is true or not, and number one, and number two, if we see any change in that, now it's the Great Lakes Water Authority rather than right. Detroit. I think... Gibraltar pays more. I think they it's, do. it's based on our units. We just based don't on have the units. The units. You know, if you go into Woodhaven, they can they have more people to pay for it. You've got it's thirty thousand units paying it, and here you've only got four thousand sharing it. I think it's scale. You know, when you're trying to compare. Apples well, another apples, thing. It's just not another hurt. thing. We have the refuse on our water bills. Yeah, correct. And cities and don't. These other cities, it's on their tax bill. Mm -hmm. Right. We have actually tried to compare. It, it, you're not even comparing apples to apples. It's all over the place. Every, some people put special assessments on. Some people put this. Some people don't include the rest. It's like we we have done huge spreadsheets, and it just you're like, okay, what what kind of sense does this yeah. make? Cause it's yeah. all it's all over the board. It truly is. Okay. Okay, so it's back to me, and I would just try attempt to summarize what we're doing. We have before us a resolution, uh, and here's what, in layman's terms, what the resolution is attempting to do. Number one, we've received from Detroit a 7.14% increase in the water rate, our wholesale water rate that we buy from Detroit, and we buy about 265 million gallons of water a year, a 7.14% increase. Now, normally we pass that on. So we've analyzed this, and what we're proposing to do in our own water rate is not raise the sewer rate at all, reduce the amount of the bill that people receive on a quarterly basis in total of $60,000 community-wide and apply that savings from refuse where we have a little bit break in cost this year against the water rate increase, which results in a water rate increase of 4.2%. Correct. Okay. So we're trying to keep it as low as we can, and we'll address it um, next year. So that's a summary of the action that's proposed. And in no further discussion on the issue. I don't know how the commissioners feel. Are there more questions, more discussion? If not, we, the chair would entertain a motion to um, either approve or disapprove the rate. I, I make a motion to approve the rate. Second. Uh, so it's moved, been moved and supported that the rate recommendation of a 4.2% increase in the water rate and the other changes that have been proposed to make the total bill received by quarterly bill by gross yield customers, water customers, just a 4.2% a increase. Um, that's the motion. Uh, all in favor? Question first, Bill. Yes, okay. Then why, we, where, where's the 6.8%? I mean, that's what the that, bill is actually that, going to That's the water, and we're going to offset water. it with the reduction of yeah. money from the, the refuse the, side. The 6.8 yeah. is strictly the water. The 4.2 is the total bill. Okay. All right. 
And are you satisfied? Well, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. So that's the, okay, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So, and I'll say yes to, so it's unanimous. Now this will go to the township board at their next meeting, which is two weeks from last night. No, it'll no, be in it's July. In, it's in July. We only have one meeting. One this. meeting a month right now. What's the meeting in July? Does anybody know? July 11th? 11th, I 11th. think it is, yeah. It's the day before ours. Well, I'm gonna be there to support Anything that your discussion, Ted, or you, Jim, um, anybody else from the commission is welcome to be there. Now, I want to refer on this matter before we leave it to the, the letter from the Great Lakes Water Authority, which is Detroit, and to page 23, you, somebody brought up earlier about the, the, the we're in a non-model contract state. And the Great Lakes Water Authority would like to offer Grossiel the opportunity to negotiate a new model contract. I think we should move forward with that. I've talked to Supervisor Loftus about that and Mr. Budney. What I would like to recommend, just so everybody knows, and we don't have to have a motion on this, I think that the township manager, supervisor, treasurer, and Mr. Budney, and I'd like to be part of the group, with um, our, our staff as well, should sit down, invite the Great Lakes Water Authority to come in and receive a copy of their model contract and begin to discuss it. Um, some people have indicated that it may be beneficial for us for future rate adjustments to be in the contract. I don't think we're any longer considering any alternatives at this point that we considered what to 10 years ago, eight years ago, we were gonna build our own water system. We looked at that when it was just Detroit's. And I guess my feeling is every community's up in the air on this, and I don't know how many of the 140 communities that are served by what was the Detroit water system, uh, all the suburban communities, but they've split the Detroit system so that Detroit operates a retail system just like we do, just like Rochester Hills does, or Auburn Hills does, or Trenton. So that's the change that was made. Although the Great Lakes Water Authority wholesale customers are now paying Detroit $50 million a year, leased the system for I think 50 years is what the deal was, something of that sort. At any rate, I think we ought to do an exploratory um, and, and get moving on it so that by the end of the year, we know where we're going with this. Now I'm opening that up for discussion from our commission, but uh, I'm thinking that certainly the township manager, probably the township attorney should be involved too, along with the treasurer. You've been involved in this for a long time, Ted. And Jim, you're the liaison. I'd like to be part of it and, um, and invite them to come in and share with us what everybody else is doing, what the contract says, take a look at it and um, make some decisions. I don't think we should sit by and ignore it. Our contract expires in 2017, right? Am I right? With? Current old contract we have with DWSD, Detroit Water System. We're, we're not we're under done. contract. We're already. done with we we're, were done, done with them. Yeah. We've been so, done. So we don't have a contract. Right. No. And I, I don't know, has Trenton taken any further action on theirs? Trenton has not, Riverview has. They've joined the Great Lakes Water Authority? Yeah, they signed. Mr. Loftus did tell me now that I think about it that he was going to talk to Trenton and see where they were going. But we ought to find out. I think we ought to get as far as yeah, you're absolutely point. right, Bill. I mean, it's it, you know, it never hurts to find out what you're what you're either in or out of, and and that's all we'd be doing until we take a look at it. Well, I'd hate to find ourselves a year from now. Now that the Great Lakes Water Authority, when they really get organized, they're they're in the process of still reorganizing, still analyzing costs, both operating costs and future capital costs and so forth. But I'd hate to see us not do anything and then a year from now find out we're getting penalized an extra 10 or 20 percent because we're not part of it. Now that's a possibility, I suppose. Well, <clears throat> there's pluses and minuses. And I think the, the big minus, of course, is what we buy into. And <clears throat> we're, we're buying into a known that they're going to lose a 5, five to 8 percent of their customer base when Genesee County moves out in the Flint area, 
and they're also in debt. They have a current debt load of about $5 billion, and they have about $8 billion in required upgrades. Uh, we need to think real strong about buying into that on a long-term basis. You're right, we're not currently looking at any options, but that doesn't mean another option might not be the place to go. Just, just a thought. I would, be oh. more, I, I would be more than willing to sit down and talk with them. And I, I, I agree with Ted also. I mean, and, but, but the key is that we sit down, see what that is, uh, and, and so we know that whatever we're doing, we're doing the right thing. Well, and simply, I don't know the answer to the questions. If there's 140 suburban communities that are part of Detroit's system now, the Regional Water Authority, and and if there's only four or five that aren't, and we're among those. I mean, I don't know the right figures, but yeah, I, I'd hate to see the disadvantage we might be at at that point. If that's yeah, true. A, a few years ago, I mean, there were like, uh, I'm going to say like 18 communities that were non-contract. So, right, so, and I'm sure that's changed by now, but yeah, but it's something we we need to look at. It, it doesn't hurt to have them come in and see what see what it would be. But we do have to think about what Ted was saying because uh, uh, that 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 change to Great Water uh, Great Lakes Water Authority really was a great thing for Detroit. They they lo they lost the debt and they got a fifty million dollar a year fee, and uh, and uh, you know the rest of the communities took you know are stuck with that less fifty million. So. Uh, yeah, it's something that has to, it, everything has to be looked at. All right, so is it the consensus of the commission that we ought to move forward, suggest to the township manager and supervisor that we should look at this? As, as yes, I think we should also have our attorney or somebody that knows something about this contract that doesn't have a vested interest and is joining with us to take a look at it and spend some time because... I, again, I'm like Ted, I'm a little bit reluctant to leap forward because I say it's so much nicer for you to do this. Uh, Without telling you what exactly. the nicer is or yeah. your drawback. Well, on the other hand, we haven't asked. So right. Let's be honest I mean, we're jumping ahead here as if we're making a decision. We're right. not making a decision. Right. We're just fact-finding. Okay, so I think that what I'd like to do is then be able to send something Here's a letter that was given to me from, by the supervisor. It was addressed to him. Um, he gave a copy of it to me. Well, actually, this copy was addressed to Lorinda. But the supervisor also received a copy of the letter. And um, from Sue McCormick, director of the Great Lakes Water Authority. And I'd like to be able to go back and, and forward a memo that the commission consensus says we ought to start negotiations to see where it takes us and fact-finding, negotiations of fact-finding with the Great Lakes Water Authority, okay? I don't think we need a motion for that, but that's no. a consensus. No, I agree with you on that. Ed? I think with the emphasis on fact-finding rather than negotiating. Right. Personally. I would, <clears throat> I would make just one suggestion that prior to that meeting with the uh, township and the water authority that we have some form of study session, and we need to get Vito involved from OHM because there's probably nobody in this county that knows more about the right water system than and he does. You know, I, does. I agree with you. Good. Okay. Um, very good. So, okay, that ends this issue then. We've taken a vote on the rate increase. That'll go to the July 11th meeting of the Township Board. Anybody's welcome to attend from our commission. And um, we'll, in the meantime, we will, I'd like to get this in front of them so the township board will, Jim, uh, my thought is, is that if I write a memo in the next few days conveying our sentiments, that that could be part of the packet and the township board could then discuss the issue. So it's not a surprise to them. Right? Right. Agreed. Okay. So I think we can put that item to rest. Agreed? Okay, so the next action item is, uh, next three involve the wastewater treatment plant. Joe Keefe is here from our wastewater treatment plant. Between Joe and Lorinda, I think that there's some issues. The first issue is 
the electrical conduit repair recommendation to award a bid. And you have on page 43 of your packet. Uh, Lorinda, you can start off, and then if Joe needs to get into it, he can. You want me to read the motion first? It's a motion to recommend to the Township Board to approve awarding a bid from Douglas Electric in the amount of $18,480 for the electrical conduit repairs at the wastewater treatment plant based upon the recommendation of our engineers. Support. Well, that's... Well, well, no, who made the motion? You make a motion, you support, yeah, and you have and then you discussion. gave discussion. So. I read the motion. I okay, read, what I did is read the motion. Okay, okay, you're supporting it. All right. Um, add anything to that? No, um, only that the project came to light, so to speak, after we finished the lighting project, and that's when Joe discovered um, that he had some uh, wires that were exposed due to water leaking into the plant. Um, so I'll let Joe take it from there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, these were, there's several, it, it's Rob Roy conduit, you know, corrosion proof, but the water got in from the building slabs outside, um, the waterproofing cracked or whatever, um, and so water got, was getting in that way and corroded these things uh, from the inside out. Um, so we got... <clears throat> Campo in there two weeks ago, and we finally got the waterproofing done to stop the water from getting in to the conduits themselves through the cement. And uh, now we're <clears throat> ready to go. We received the two bids; they were relatively close. Um, we had a clarification on the <coughs> bid from Douglas Electric so that there would be no change orders, um, and they were the low bidder. Okay, so are there questions? Did we put this in our budget this year? Yes. So yes. Are there yes. any questions at this time? The, the, uh, in the budget, if I read it correctly, it was our, what we budgeted was a little less than that. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. correct. My only other, I, I, the only other question uh, was um, on the request for quotes, there was five items that were requested to be in the quotes. Uh, if you look at page 49. Uh, The one, two, three, four, five listed there, and uh, I don't see those in there. Uh, you know, in what we have, D did right. they supply? They that? supplied everything. That's yeah, all that's I wanted good. to know. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so uh, one question, Lorinda. I had it written down someplace, but I can't find it. When we budgeted this, and I'm looking at page 48. Uh, how much did we uh, budget for the replacement of these? Uh, I think that was twelve. I can't read 12, it. Twelve thousand. Was it twelve thousand? Yeah, I think it was yeah. twelve thousand. Yeah, it's. If you look on page fifty. Oh you yeah, can it's read it there. Second to the last. Yeah, it's twelve thousand. Yes, I see the electrical conduits. Yep. Okay, so this is slightly higher. Um, yeah. I think the next issue is as well, but we're yes. probably not going to finish everything we budgeted this year anyway. Well, you never know. <laughs> Some may come in cheaper. We're on a roll right now, yeah. so. Yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good. All right, so motion is to uh, uh, award a contract of 18480 for the electrical conduit repairs at the wastewater treatment plant. Are there further questions? If not, all in favor, keep by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Next item is the Arc Flash Compliance Study. Uh, the motion proposed is to... Uh, recommended the township board to approve a bid from a company called PowerTech Services in the amount of $27,810 for the Arc Flash compliance study based upon the recommendation of the, our engineers. Brenda and Joe. Uh, Joe, you want to just address. You have a copy of the report in front of you? Uh, I have, yes, I have the your board pen. Okay. Um, you want to <coughs> briefly describe what's proposed? Okay, the, the arc flash um, study is to comply with uh, NFPA 70, the 2015 version. Uh, it's for employee safety. Um, there's zones uh, that are restricted zones in front of like all our uh, motor control center panels 
especially when they're open. And this compliance study is going to make the determination of where those zones are and mark them. Uh, and only qualified people can go into these zones to do the uh, any work that needs to be done on live circuits <clears throat> in these panels. That it? That's it. Okay, so it. this was uh, the total price is twenty-seven thousand eight hundred ten dollars. Uh, our budget was fifteen thousand. When you first brought this forward, I think we were all concerned that this is a safety issue for the staff that works at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, the price is much higher than we anticipated that it was going to be. Yeah, I'm beginning to doubt my own estimates from. <laughs> right. So. Um, does anybody have any questions, recommendations? What was the addendum? <clears throat> the addendum was the original uh, request for quotations quoted the 2012 standards oh. and not the 2015 standards. Okay, and I, and I take what happened was one of the companies got the right... Really and what, the other one well, yeah. didn't get the addendum according right. to... That's exactly Because I was happened. wondering, with the way it's written, it says, well, there was a difference in price, so we were th rethinking. It didn't say there was a great difference, just a difference in price, yeah. which you always have, and we're rethinking of rebidding and going, we always have that. What's going on? But after I went through it, I figured out what you were doing. I think when this uh, matter goes to the... Township Board, if we approve it tonight, the letter from the engineer should be restructured to indicate what the addendum was. Okay. So that it eliminates that question. It's a legitimate question. Yeah. Make a note of that. But um, this is something we felt was a safety issue that should be done. Are there any comments from the commissioners? You know, the sooner the better. Okay, I'm not hearing any questions, so, um, and this is just a study. This will this will also identify it, and will they mark and, and it? And it'll be marked, and we will then be so in complete compliance. complete the work. We will be in compliance with the study yep. and implementation of whatever is necessary, and so we'll be done with it. Yep. Not going to get anything back on this issue. I don't think, I think, think so at all. I'm not sure that the memorandums say that this is this is a full compliance action. It portrays it as just a study. Well, it does say and install all of the arc flash labels. So yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's somewhat it, yeah, it's somewhat this misleading by talking about just being a study, but it's really a, a complete package. Yeah, right, it just I mean, doesn't what, include training. What it, there won't be training, but that you know, that's Suez handles that's the Suez, training. Yeah. Get our own training, right? Well, there'd be no. So extra actually cost kind of drove this a little bit, um, <clears throat> because it, it's their employees that are <clears throat> working in this environment. Um, so they, they, you know, kind of pushed it, you know, to see if get our clients to agree to it, and most of them are starting to comply with this. Right. So, are there other questions from the commission? If not, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Oh, oh, do we, Wait a do minute. We have a Who made motion? it? Who made the motion? I'll make it. Okay. I'll support it. Thank you. Sorry, okay. We had That's a motion okay. On for. I'll indicate by say. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. We're going to move forward with that issue. Next issue is the maintenance cap request for additional funding at the wastewater treatment plant with our uh, operating contractor, Suez. Uh, Linda? Um, I'll read the motion. Uh, motion to pay Suez Environmental Services Incorporate, Incorporated the sum of $5,595.63 for maintenance costs that exceeded the $40,000 annual cap for fiscal year 2016-2017. Somebody? Wait, is that correct, 2016-17? Our fiscal year? Oh, no, 15-16. You're right. Good catch, Bill. Okay, so JB. All right, who's going to support it? Can I, one other thing on there. That, sure. 
because we had a slight small rollover from the previous year <coughs> it was actually forty thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars and change so this exceeded the five thousand and change exceeded forty thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars and eighty seven cents right because you had come to the commission yeah. prior to that for an additional uh, that was for the that was ten thousand like thousand yeah was twenty thousand for the six month October through March right. Right. of fourteen to fifteen when we right. had that month to month for the six yep. months there right six twenty five left over so okay so we have a motion on the floor do we yes and supported we have a motion and support for this item who made it I read it oh who supported it oh I didn't hear him thank you <laughs> something we have I'll to do he's this. so quiet you know, I know <laughs> yeah uh, just so if anybody's watching or questioning we have uh, about 10 pages of backup here of all the repairs that minor repairs uh, ranging from 49 I'm looking at one on page 64 49 dollars uh, there's one for 964 dollars um, and everything in between so every month there are numerous repairs maintenance items basically at the wastewater plant that need to be done we have a lot of equipment and machinery in a lot of different buildings there and uh, that's what this is about and each year we budget uh, forty thousand dollars for our operating contractor to spend for those kind of maintenance repairs and so when we exceed it at the end of the year we do a look back a list of all these and we adopt a motion like this so or in the alternative, if we don't spend it all, like a small, like $600, we just applied it as a credit to this year's maintenance <clears throat> cap, or it would be a credit. You know, a larger amount would actually be refunded or a credit on our on an invoice. Right. So with that, we have a motion on the floor. If there are no other questions, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Myself as well, motion's approved. Okay, thank you. Oh. <clears throat> Okay, we're on to the manager's report. Okay, first up is the dust control. Um, DD Emulsions completed the dust bond applications a week ago. Um, seems like everybody's pretty happy with it. Um, we haven't had any rain, so I'm hoping that we'll see a little bit of rain sometime this summer to help out. But they applied about 58,000 gallons. Uh, the second thing is East River Water Main Project update. Um, John, do you want to give an update, or should I just go ahead and read what I have? Whatever you'd prefer. Okay, I'll just read what I have then. Um, Veritaire contracting is about 95% complete. Um, they replaced a 6-inch cast iron water main with a 14-inch um, HDPE. They grouted the old water main, and they'll continue with the restoration and punch list items uh, next week. As of last Wednesday, all the residents are now connected to the new water main, and all of the new hydrants are in service. And Veritaire is actually five weeks ahead of schedule. Wow. Um, I, I drove East River tonight just to kind of get, it looks, it looks great. It's nice to see um, all those fire hydrants out there now. And it looked like the restoration is just about done. They had a, a crew working this evening. Um, finishing up a couple of spots. So uh, kudos to those guys for a job well done. And also for John supervising out there, he was uh, running his tail off for them at, at times. But um, And I appreciate all the residents uh, with their patience and understanding for the water services being shut off and being switched over. I know um, a few times we um, we couldn't get some valves shut off, and we had to incorporate a, you know a few more households. And I just want to say thank you to the public. Did uh, you want to add anything to that? I'd just like to say that everybody did an outstanding job on that Vertiter crew and the full bore crew. Like she uh, Lorinda stated, we're at least a month ahead of schedule. The restoration crew told me today they will be completely done and off the island by this Friday. And also like to acknowledge Les's consultation. He was very beneficial on a shutdown on Stout Street. The, there was a, a valve buried in the woods that was not on the blueprint. So called and got a consultation. I always joke with him since he retired. I call him Shady Acres Consulting. Well, <laughs> he came through for us. Thank you, Les. Well, thank you, Les. So uh, kudos to the contractor. Uh, I got a question. I've driven it numerous times, and... The grass is growing already in spots where they made the connections. Um, how many complaints have you received about it? Uh, I, 
I only had a handful, really. I mean, there, I mean, everybody was really understanding. Most of the people were just happy that they had a new water main coming through. No more water main breaks up there, you know? So. And, and John, I think you told me once, but isn't it true that it was an old six-inch cast iron, 65-year-old mm -hmm. pipe, and in some spots there was only two inches of the pipe working? It was choked down yeah. quite a bit. Remember that picture I shared with you guys last time? Yeah. So quick the fire chief is very happy. Yeah. <laughs> He's the happiest, I think. Oh, uh, just a quick chief. question. Yeah. The pit. What... I, the pit that they dump the slurry oh, in. Yeah. What? Uh -huh. What's the? What are they going to do with that? What? When's it going to be cleaned up? Or they what started happens? to mix it uh, Monday, and or excuse me, Friday. Started to mix it on Friday. It's still too wet, so they're adding a little bit of dry material and stirring it continually. Get it once to the it, right consistency. Yeah, once it's dry enough, it's all out of here, which should be in maybe a week or so. Then they just fill it, it in up. and yeah. with the uh, dry dirt material, and that's yeah. it. Yep, yeah, clean it up and go. Well, very good. Yeah, that was a great project. I mean, it, re I mean, it was handled very nice. I wish we could move them right to West River tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> While they're on a roll. <laughs> okay, and the last um, update I have is on the Stout Road drainage project. Uh, Campo Brothers completed it, um, and all the restoration is completed, with the exception of a few of the sprinklers. Um, I sent out letters to, I think there was six or seven homes, I can't recall now, um, asking them to co contact the uh, contractor directly to set up a specific time that's convenient for the resident. So, and most people were happy with that. So, uh, their contract um, deadline was June 30th, and they're like right on time. So, and it looked nice down there. I drove down there as well. So they got the grasses growing and and whatnot. So, does look good. So. Yep. So. Oh, and I know the. Cash and Marcy were extremely happy with the whole thing. They were the couple that originated. They brought it to the commission for help. So they are extremely happy. In fact, yeah, yeah, you and right. I, were, we drove down there, and she stopped us and shook our hands, and, and she was very, very thankful. Well, we spent a lot of money. It should be. <laughs> yeah. In fact, at 11 properties, but... Uh, yep. Okay, well, thank you for the update there. Okay, one other thing I'd like to add. I just want to congratulate um, Jerry Dion and George Marks on passing their S3 exam. And I just want to say kudos, guys. You guys did a good job. So you need to explain this in case anybody's watching. This oh, is the S3. The S3 is a, it's a, it's a licensing exam um, um, conducted by uh, the DEQ. And for our system, we um, we have to have an, an S2, but we also require that all our staff hold, at a minimum, an S4, and both guys now have an S3. John and I both hold an S2. And so, so do I. So oh, yeah, is, and so do you. This is, this is <laughs> our backup. Our, a, yeah, my backup. Les is, is emeritus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, these are these are licenses to licenses. operate a public water supply system. Right. Correct. Right. Now we have four people that have some form of a license plus the emeritus, which is the fifth. Very good. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, but I have to excuse myself Thank from the for, meeting. I know you do. Thank you for being here. So we still have a quorum. And um, okay. we're going to go on to discussion items. Uh, and I'll take the first one. Uh, the Sanitary Sewer TV Inspection Program, uh, I'd ask our engineers, uh, Mr. Sabak, to bring something forward at this meeting. That's why we put it on the agenda. He was relying on uh, one of the contractors to get some more information back to him. This is for TV inspection of, of sewers, what, what other communities' costs are, and how they're approaching it. Um, and unfortunately, the report wasn't ready for tonight's meeting. What I wanted to do, we budgeted, if you recall, I think we budgeted $150,000 to start it, to get a program going, so that in a five or six year period, we would TV inspect all the sanitary sewers community and do an undertake, determine what the repairs are needed, if any, and I know there are numerous, uh, in the sewer lines. So at any rate, that'll be at, a, at, a, at one of our next meetings, so we're not going to get into that tonight. Next is uh, Cheshire Court, page 65 to 70. Um, as chair, I guess these are really discussion items, and I don't know if you want to kick it off, Lorinda, but I'd be glad to summarize it. 
Go ahead. Um, That's good. You have a memorandum from our engineers. What we found out, you recall that <clears throat> Mr. DiClaudio was here from Cheshire Court at our last meeting. And a year ago, uh, the neighbors on Cheshire Court complained about the fact that water never leaves their property. So water comes from the south to the north on the open space areas, and their backyards are wet and damp all the time, and then the swale area between numerous homes is always wet. So we uh, began to look at what might take place, and at the last meeting, a, a proposal was brought forth of about $81,000 to undertake a connection to the court, and I'm going to refer to this colored map we now have. I don't know if you want to show it on the screen or in there or not, but um, so this colored map everybody had. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary for you to do that, Bill. We've all got it. Well, I'm talking about the public, if there oh, anybody's I'm watching. So um, it, what turns out to be the fact is, of all the courts on Manchester, and there are probably ten or eleven courts. Uh, Cheshire Court is at the high point, and so there was never a storm drain put in from Manchester Road south to serve the residents' the backyards of all the properties. You see, the green line is, is the typical uh, sewer that existed from Manchester Road on all the other courts. Cheshire Court does not have a storm sewer. So the, the, the red lines indicate proposed storm drains. Some are French drains, some are pipe, uh, more uh, formal pipe. To take the low points on properties, the, the five or six properties that are affected off Cheshire Court, and move the water to the east side of Thorpe Court to a storm sewer, that's the green line. So that's the proposal. And we did an investigation of that. Mr. DiClaudio thought that there was a sewer out in front of Cheshire Court at Manchester. It turns out there is not. So there's no alternative but to go this way. Uh, this would affect about five or six properties on uh, that if, where the rear yards abut Cheshire Court. The revised cost estimate for undertaking this project is in the, is in the range of 88,000. We have not authorized detailed engineering plans. Uh, so that's one issue. I would like to see us move forward with this. It's a legitimate issue. And um, authorize the, take, make a motion to authorize the engineers to prepare detailed plans for bidding. And here's where I'm at. If we don't do it now and get it done this year, next spring we'll have the same problem. So that's one issue. And so uh, I think we should discuss all these before we, uh, all the, I, the next two items as well. Uh, John Keim, our staff, well-respected staff member here, had suggested that we analyze cutting off the water in the, in the open space, which is on page 67, you'll see a map that shows the wooded area and proposed new ditch alignment that, that, would prov that would pick up the water in the open space, and I don't know, the acreage of the open space is substantial, and then you'd run French drains from each of the courts to that line. But it turns out that the proper place to put the line through the woods that encounters a huge number of trees, and it turns out we're bucking grade, some two to three feet of elevation that rises uh, according to the survey work that was done. So this has become in a very expensive pr alternative, which in my mind is not the most favorable. And in, on page 65, there's a discussion of that. And it, the cost estimate just, it's not detailed, but it's around $400,000. So that doesn't seem to be a solution in my mind. John, do you want to comment on that? Have you talked to the engineers? I have not since. I, you uh, told me about this letter yesterday, but uh, no, I haven't. But it, it, I didn't, it was just eyeballing, you know, what we were looking at, and, and you know, I, like I said, intercepting that Grozeal drain was an option, but that was a lot closer to the property line. I didn't realize he had to go that far back into the woods and clear all those trees. So. <clears throat> okay, so uh, in That's my fine. mind, the motion. Oh, I'm sorry, Ted. I have a question. Uh, 
if I'm reading this right, this proper this drainage issue runs parallel to Manchester Road to the south. To the south of Manchester. The houses in the houses are south of Manchester. Right. They're all, the courts are all in the south. There's side. several hundred acres that are privately owned. Right. And this drainage that you're proposing is on private property. Right. You know that. We'd have to get a, a drainage easement. So we're going to drain private property? No, no. We're, well, that was the thought, that we would run a ditch through that private property. Weren't you here at the last meeting? Or, you, or did you miss it? No, I was here. We had a discussion about this, and the suggestion was made that, it, number one, a lot of people think that's not developable, but it is owned by seven different property owners. Right. And the thought was, well, we could go to them and ask them for a, t a temporary drain easement if we were to be, if the ditch would solve the problem, a temporary drain easement until such time as the property is developed. And the thought was, is when it is developed, if a plan ever comes in, they're going to have to drain it somehow. Well, my question would be, if we're now going to move forward and drain private property, township, you're suggesting that the township pick up the entire portion of this? No, we're not. What I, what I, maybe I didn't get to say it yet. We're not in favor of doing that now. The cost estimate's too high. It does, it, what I'm in favor of doing is addressing just Cheshire Court Building but you're, this. But you're also draining private property. So are the owners of those lots that we're draining, are they going to be involved in a drainage grant program where they pick up half, for, or are you just going to drain private property? Well, we haven't. Uh, th this is really no different than what we've done on Stout. Hmm? I mean, this is rear yard. No, no. Stout, Stout was a drain that was on Wayne County property. This is private property. This has nothing to do with Stout. I've got to go back in my memory about what other projects we've undertaken where we've drained. I mean, we, we've asked residents throughout that if they need some assistance draining their private property, there's a drainage grant program within its limits. And now we're suggesting, I'm just asking, I don't know. Now you're suggesting that we take it upon ourselves to drain private property without any resident? Well, we haven't we haven't gotten that far. What we've been trying to evaluate, that's, that's what this plan would do. We haven't even talked about the subject of whether we would ask the property owners to participate in the cost as well. Yes, we haven't gotten to that point. That's a legitimate question. What I wanted to say is Cheshire is the only court that doesn't have a storm drain. I understand, I understand that. But the property that we're discussing right now is private property. Well, this, if, coming. If, we're, if we're asking the rest of the residents the that water. have drainage problems on their property to participate in the drainage grant program, why would this be different? That's my only question. And, and it's been my understanding that most of the water that's coming to their property is coming from the open space that the township owns, plus the parcel that the property owners own. I don't think the township owns that property. They don't. They don't. Not adjacent to it, but isn't there a large open space south of the, the property the we're talking south about? South of this, again, there's, there's It's all in the space. wooded area, and it all comes this way. Oh, I don't know that that's true, but... That's what I've been led to believe. So um, I, I'm just concerned that we've established a program for private residents to drain properties ask them to participate, are they going to come back and say, well, wait a minute, if you're going to drain this piece of property, we want our money back. That's my concern. I, okay, I understand what you're saying. Bill, just um, to clarify this, this wouldn't really help those owners of that private property. Where this, The people that will get the advantage or the, the help would be the people in Cheshire Court, correct? not the property owners that own that vacant property behind. Oh, that's correct. So they wouldn't really benefit. Yeah, I think Ted is speaking to the issue that the five or six people that would benefit off Cheshire Court right. are private property owners, and some of the improvements are proposed on their backyards and side yards. Okay. I see. Okay. Now, 
if you look at the green line on the plan, it shows a, a storm sewer that was built by the original developer that goes into the backyard portions of the yards. It just happens that Cheshire is at the high point of Manchester, so it drains both east and west without an, an outlet directly in front of Cheshire Court. That's the problem. So their properties don't have any place to drain without something being built here. So <clears throat> um, the question of financing and what we're doing could be left open. I think what we need to do is, well, I, I, I guess I'm um, going to search for an answer here as to what we should do. I, I wanted to get, this is just the preliminary, not even the design, just the sketch based on some survey data of what might work. Um, Actually, Bill, I got a question to ask you. Is what they've drawn here, is that on their property or is that in that property that's off of their property? Well, Les, I'm not sure it's even that precise, but that's a good question. There's a utility right away in the rear easement. It is the utility. <coughs> utility easement. right away in the rear easement. Overhead power line, utility easement. The property to the south of that is privately owned, and the property to the south of that is owned by the township. Correct. Right. right. Drainage is not necessarily coming from township property. It's coming from that private property. And that will never get developed. That's why all those people bought it together. That's right. That was the intent. In fact, part of that has been turned over to the Nature and Land Conservancy. It's just, I think it's a question we need to address so that we don't have a bunch of people standing here saying, you know, we, we, we have some issues with how we're using our drainage grant money. Sure, and I think, I think the issue, the next issue is similar. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the next issue where we have Woodcrest and O'Donnell drainage issues, this is off Park Lane, north of Church Road. And um, get the right page number here. Page 69. This would affect uh, about a dozen homes as well where there is no, uh, there's improper drainage along the rear yards. Uh, near Woodcrest to Park Lane, and the John, you want to explain how this came about? Uh, many customer requests for the again the backyards are being flooded from the wooded area to the south, and so uh, the rains company went out and did a topo and shot some elevations and thought this was the best option to drain that property without putting that excess water onto the property owners. So what you'd be doing is digging a ditch. Correct, swale, yes. Swale, and then running a pipe along Park Lane from, the, which is a couple hundred feet, I'm guessing, two, two times. from Woodcrest to the um, uh, south. Existing storm. To the south, connected to a storm. Who owns that wooded property? We do? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Township. Township owns Yes, Well, anyway, these were preliminary cost estimates, um, and uh, I guess we, I'd like to keep it moving forward somehow, so should we, and, and I recall another one we did off Loma Circle, not the one at West River in Loma Circle, but back in, oh, Hawthorne. where we had to go into yes, by Hawthorne. By Hawthorne. But what we did there essentially is we took an existing ditch that was on the border between Hawthorne's property and a few property owners, a ditch that was growing up over and silted in. It wasn't functioning as a ditch and we reestablished it. It was a Wayne County drain. It was an old drain, right. And we reestablished it. Wayne it. County drain. Yeah. We reestablished it. That's what we did there. So um What's your pleasure? My, my thinking is I'd like to have the engineers authorized. Somebody's got to do a design, and then we could meet with the residents and talk about cost sharing. 
I don't, I don't know where people want to go with it. In both cases, in the one case of Cheshire, we're going to address about uh, six, seven parcels of property. And in the case of Cheshire, it's at least a dozen. Woodcrest. And, and Woodcrest. Not Cheshire, but Woodcrest. 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 At least a dozen. And then, John, would you explain the O'Donnell portion of that? The uh, there's an existing drain line there as well that comes over to the sub into Woodcrest, which is overgrown, just like you were referring to the one on Hawthorne and Loma. And so between Rains and myself, we're going to go out there and take some elevations and see what we can do with opening that back up as well to alleviate the backyard's drainage on O'Donnell. And no Wayne County drain? Yes, sir. There's a lot of history to that drain. Well, it's only um, it's only June, so one one action we could take regarding all these is we could um, we, uh, we could ask for uh, a meeting and talk about how you might break these costs down. I, I think it's important. I, I really do. That's fine. Shouldn't we have a better idea? These are these are close cost estimates here. Or you're saying that you wanted to have the engineers take a look at it? No, these are better... th these are preliminary estimates, Ron. Without, okay. Without engineer right. drawings. Okay. So on all these, do you want to defer and have we set up a drain committee? The last meeting, it's in the minutes, and uh, we were going to. In fact, this we did meet with the engineers. John and I did. Jim Budney. Jim Nelson, uh, continue this further and uh, bring back a report at the next meeting and address the finance issues. We certainly have time at this point. A desirable time to build any of these would be in the, oh. in the fall. As long as we get them done. All right, so. Thoughts, everybody shaking their head. Wanted Let's have another to drain committee meeting. Defer the items and and uh, bring back a more detailed report at the next meeting. I agree. I will make a motion to that effect. So we're going to defer Cheshire Court, Woodcrest, and O'Donnell, and um, bring those back at the next meeting. I'll second it. Uh, further discussion, questions. Hearing none. Uh, all in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 And so the matter will be deferred till the next meeting. We'll bring it back to the next meeting. Okay. Uh, the, ne the next item we put on the agenda as well is the West River Road Water Main Project plan. And uh, that report will be coming back at our July meeting. Uh, attached in your packets was a report from our finance director, and I had a long talk with our treasurer about this, and that's the total a bond issue that the Township Board has adopted moving forward with of $6.5 million for the East River Road water main and, and for a proposed water main on West River Road. And stated earlier, based on her analysis of our bond debt structure, uh, this would not affect water rates and uh, so that uh, with other debt that's expiring so they're moving forward with these regarding West River we're going to have a report a more we did get a cost estimate report but I want to see a map that shows uh, the limits of the improvement and, the, and if you recall there was 11 parcels where a sewer needs to be replaced I want to see the limits of those too so we'll get a report back uh, the moving forward with the financing the next question would be to authorize engineering, right? Because this is going to involve West River Road, and, and the water main, as I understand it, would go under the east lane, which is the northbound lane of West River Road. And we're going to have to get a permit from the county to do this. That may take a while. And when I say a while, six to months to nine months to work out the details. So um, the next question we're going to be asked is to move forward with the authorizing the engineering, which would be substantial for this project. And um, I think the money that – do you have any idea when the bonds are going to be sold? Again? Do you have any idea when the bonds 
for the water main are going to be sold? Uh, you have a request right here. I know, but I wonder when the sale date, when you're actually going to... Well, as soon as we get all the approvals. Oh, you have to, you're waiting for the referendum period right now, right? You have to wait for the approvals for that. Okay. So, I mean, in, in the next few months... Purposes, we're ready to move forward with it. In the next few months, the bonds will actually be sold. So we're setting it, we're setting it 4.5%. We're not going to get any better. We're going to, depending on what happens with the bond market, that's going to do nothing but go up. So that's just a heads up, and that that West River Road will be coming back to us at our next meeting. Bill, one thing, uh, 2017 is a tentative build date. Everything goes according to Well, uh, maybe. What we're shooting for. Okay. I mean, if, if we, it's going to take a few months to get the plans done. And then it, it could take six months. We could start sometime in 2017. I suppose yes, that's realistic. The engineering would start almost immediately. Yeah, right. But no one's authorized that yet at this point. Right. But we get beyond that period, and also, um, I mean, I think we ought to. I don't see a problem with it working. It's a question we can get our report back so we know what we're talking about, and that the proper information is available for the township board. Okay, so that looks like it's it for uh, items, and the chairman has no further comment or report. So, uh, go around the table. Ted, anything else? Les? I have a question. Uh, on some of the water main breaks, I see the uh, road was tore up. Uh, when is the asphalt going to get done? Tomorrow by noon. How's that? That works now. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> so really, yes, yeah. Sir. That's that's good action. I wish you could get that kind of action on the signs. But uh, <laughs> Still I, thought we, I, I thought we changed the sign. The uh, I got a magic marker to house. Les. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new neighbor moving in next door to me, and the guy used to work on this Dagasini sewer project. He 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 knew me, and he says, uh. What's the name of this street? <laughs> I said, it's Gross Hill Parkway. Why? He said, well, I called up Detroit Edison to get the electricity in my name, and I told him I'm at 9235 Parkway Drive. They told him, is this, there's no such street. <laughs> he says, well, that's what the sign says. So they looked up, and they, he said the guy's previous name who added in electricity, he says, that's Gross Hill Parkway. So another time <laughs> that people are getting pulling their hair out because you don't have enough to pull out, Les. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. I mean, I'm just sick and tired of it getting told they can't change it because it's a platted road. Okay, open up the rotary book and you pull out the map. <laughs> There's no Parkway Drive on that map. It's Gross Hill Parkway, and that's all I have. Well, that's enough. That's plenty. <laughs> Thank you. Jim Nelson. Nothing further. Ron Wilder. Nothing further except like to mention to Les and to John, thank you for reminding us that this is Flag Day. Oh, yes, very good. That's it. John, you have a report? Uh, I'd just like to mention that the uh, fl uh, flushing should be finished up this week. We're south, coming north to south. We're at Grow Road today. And also, I'd like to congratulate uh, Jerry and George on their well done on obtaining their S3 water distribution certification. And also, I'd like to acknowledge our uh, seasonal employee, Eddie Gape, who's done an outstanding job on roadside maintenance. I don't know if anybody's noticed the guardrails and yeah, all the areas. He's done a great job. And that's all. Thank you. Well, John, I got a question. Do you have anybody maintaining the fire hydrants? Yes, we do. And we're going to start painting fire hydrants probably next week. <clears throat> yeah, I noticed some of them look pretty bad. You done that right after you sign. <laughs> well, John asked me if I wanted to come back and do that, and I said, John, that's what I did when I started here 43 years ago. See? You already know circle. what you're doing then. <laughs> right? What right, goes so. around comes around. I have one more thing to add. I got a very nice thank you card. 
um, from all the folks on Blauvelt, Chicory, and Waterway. They thank us for promoting public health and the great job on dust control. And that's from those folks. They, Bob Z dropped it off the other day. I thought I'd share that with you guys. Good. Joe, anything else to add? I would like to make a motion. We adjourn this meeting at 825. Their support. Support. Supported, we adjourn the meeting. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Meeting's adjourned. All right.